All right, guys, welcome to Minuteman Laboratories. We're going to be doing some special testing here on this Titan Solar Generator to see how it connects to these expansion batteries that are not from point zero energy. This is going to be a pretty fun test. This is not actually a lab, but I wanted to show you guys how you can take different types of batteries, add them to your Titan, because the Titan is pretty much the only system that allows you to add different batteries of another brand. Now, I've even got two different brand batteries here, but internally, they're pretty much identical. The real question is, does this work? These batteries are about 2,500, almost 2,600 watt hours each. Now, each one of these is 12 volts, and this is a 24 volt system. So how can we get these batteries connected together in order to work properly with this, and does it function properly? So that's what we're gonna do in this video. Now, I just did a test on this last week. This unit right here, I bought it three years ago, and it tested at 94% output from the battery. Even three years later, this thing is still performing extremely well. If you need a 120 volt system only, it's a really good option to go with. So stay tuned, this one's gonna be really cool. And with these two batteries, I actually purchased, uh, yes, again, I purchased my own money for this video. If you appreciate that, leave a thumbs up. This is a 40 amp, 12 volt charger. It's basically 500 watt charger for these batteries. Now I completely charged up these batteries identically the other day. So I literally did this two days ago. If I put the probes right on here, you can see I'm at 13.2 right here. And then on this battery, I'm at 13.6. Now, generally speaking, if you're within 0.5 volts of each other, there's not a big issue. Once I connect these two batteries together, they will be connected in series. And once they're in series, their voltage will combine to be double of whatever they are. So we're gonna be around 27 volts. But this unit, one of the cool things about it, is right on the front here, it'll actually show you the voltage. And right now we're at 28.9 volts on this. So to double check that, because we have to make sure we're within 0.5 volts of this battery bank connecting to this, then I need to test here. We're at 28.7 volts. So there's a slight difference from what's up on the screen. You can see I've got three batteries on this Titan. If I wanted to take one or two of these batteries and separate it from the main power module, I would use this cable. It's basically a Y branch connector where this goes into the battery expansion port and then these go on top of the Titan batteries. We're not doing that. We're gonna use the other battery expansion cable. It still has this SB50 connector here but then two heavy leads right here to go to the batteries. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect up these batteries and then we need to discharge this to match whatever this battery voltage is. This right here is the major issue with connecting different types of batteries to the Titan aside from their own Titan batteries. That is because these batteries are able to charge at 14.5 volts, which is what this is able to do. This is actually able to charge it at the right voltage to where when it's combined, it can be at the 29 volts of this. But this isn't gonna be charging when we connect it. So the real question is, if we connect these batteries together and they won't stay at 29 volts, but this is meant to be at 29 volts at 100%, what's going to happen once this is all connected, this is fully recharged and it sits for a day. Is it naturally just gonna go back down in voltage? Are these gonna have too much voltage on them? Are these batteries going to get drained? So I put on about a thousand watt load on it and this is a 6,000 watt hour battery. So in order to get it down to 27.1 volts, this might take a couple of hours. The plug like that already on the outside, that's a really huge help because then you can wire directly into your electrical panel. Okay, so I've got this at 27.1 here. I've got these at 27.1. The breaker is right here. This is a 150 amp setup right here. So I plugged it in, connected it here, making sure that this button is depressed to make sure that there's no connection. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset the screen by holding the OK button. The capacity here is gonna go up by 200 amps. So I'm gonna press OK, go to the hundreds mark, and go up, so this is 422 amp hours. Then I'm gonna hit the back button up here, go back to my main screen, and then I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to make this connection, so by flipping that over, these batteries are now part of this battery. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back on. And then what this will do is a top calibration. So I basically need to charge it all the way up, get these batteries fully topped off, as well as these batteries fully topped off, and then everything is supposed to self-balance. This is where the real question is, is, is this going to work properly? 
because we don't know what's gonna happen with these battery voltages or these battery voltages right here, since these are already maxed out, but they can charge up to 29 volts by being together, but this is supposed to stay at 29 volts. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the wall charger for the Titan, charge this whole thing up, and we're gonna see what happens. Now, this is the older charger because I've had my Titan since the very beginning. I literally was one of the first people to order this system. I have the original box charger. It's different now than what you'll get in the current Titan systems. So I put some electrical tape over these posts here just to keep them extra safe. I've got a tiny bit exposed right here just so I can check the voltage. It says we're at 27 volts right now. Well, it is just about midnight and it is sitting at 28.9 volts. I don't know if it's going to get topped off. I know that these batteries are definitely exceeding their max voltage for what they like to stay at. So I'll just leave this on here and see if it hits 29 volts because the screen is supposed to auto reset at 29 volts, but I don't know that it's gonna do that. I don't know that this is recognizing that there's another 200 amps here. So I'll just have to leave this plugged in and see what happens. Okay, so this is actually the second time I've redone this whole thing. If you appreciate me going through that, this has taken more than 24 hours just to do this part of the video. Go ahead and smash that like button if you appreciate the, all the work here. But the screen wasn't recalibrating for some reason. Uh, so I got it up to 29.0 volts last night. Uh, I found out of that this morning and the screen wasn't calibrated. It still didn't say 100%, it said 53%. What I learned is that if that happens, you can hold the up button and it will force the screen to recalibrate properly. So little tidbit that I didn't even know before. So that's a really cool thing that I just learned. But we officially have 422 amp hours of battery capacity here. And we're gonna do a load test to see how much power this actually puts out. So this test will go till about midnight doing a discharge here to see how much power it can output. So I'm very excited for it. I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, so I've got the test going on right here. It says we're gonna run for six hours at this load. So I'm gonna use the time-lapse timer here on this camera to see when this whole thing uh, ends and it's at 0%, if it really lasted six hours. That'll be quite impressive if, if it can do that. Just shut off, the fans are still blowing. It's not blowing hot. So I'm not sure what it's saying is the issue, except that it's used close to what would be 100% of this battery capacity of the Titan batteries, but not the expansion batteries. Basically that much power is what's left in those batteries. So this is interesting. And it's saying it used 5.46 kilowatt hours. And that would be 91% efficiency out of this, but that would have been above a 0.2 C rate but clearly it did not use the entire battery capacity. There's still about that expansion battery's worth of energy unused. So that is quite interesting. Have a lower load at this point. I'm gonna let this go for five minutes or so and see what happens. All right, so that only ran for like a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and reset this here. I found out what the issue is. This is at about 22.2 volts right here. But when we come over to the expansion batteries here, we have 26.4 volts. And if we look at the breaker right here, it's been tripped. So at some point, this got disconnected for some reason. Uh, it should only do that if there is an overload for some reason. I don't know why that would be. So the bottom line is these are now very imbalanced from the main unit. And that would make perfect sense why we got five and a half kilowatt hours out of this six kilowatt hour battery. And then it shut off because it's supposed to shut off when it gets close to about 21 volts. So I'm definitely confused on these batteries because it says that they can go down to 9.5 volts, which would be 19 volts combined. And this is going to go down to 21 volts. So there's no reason for this to have popped this breaker right here and disconnected. So I'm gonna have to do this test once again. Take four, just kidding, but I am on day four. It's taking a lot longer than I thought it would take. Uh, this is supposed to be a little bit easier. So I'm hoping it works, but I really, really wanna know, do these properly work with the Titan? I mean, that is the main question we're trying to answer here. So if it doesn't work on this test, I'll probably end up giving up. But 
do a one more load test on it, see what kind of efficiency we get, and we will go from there. So the test seems to be going really well so far, no issues. We are past the voltage that it shut off last time. And so I'm confident that this is gonna run all the way through. We're almost to three kilowatt hours used, and it says we still have four hours to run. So this is looking really promising so far. I did notice that this little uh, fuse box, sorry, this breaker right here is getting a little warm, but it's currently at 99 degrees, which is well within its operating temperature. So I'm gonna keep monitoring that. I don't know if that's why it shut off last time. So the cool thing is the Titan hasn't had a problem running the load of basically 2000 watts consistently for a long period of time. I've tested that many times before, no issues there. The issue seems to be this fuse, this cable, something. So this is already turned off within like 30 seconds. It, the fan turned off so it's not as loud. And this fuse is now working. So what I'm gonna try to do now is reduce the load. This cable is a little warm. I wouldn't say it's hot, but it's definitely warm. And so I'm wondering if this shut off because it feels like there's too much current going through it. Not sure why that would be. So I'm gonna lower the load and see what happens. So this is a 1000 watt load. It's half of what I was doing before. This is basically a 0.1 C discharge rate, which should make it more efficient. But bottom line is I wanna know, can I run this all the way down to zero like it should, or is this going to pop again and then it's not gonna work. But at least we know now in this configuration, it's not gonna do that 2000 watt load at this battery voltage or whatever's going on. That wasn't even 30 seconds and it turned off again. Below this battery voltage, for some reason, these will not continue to run. I'm not sure why that is because they're not fully drained. They're not even close to being fully drained and neither are these. And we're not using more amps than what this breaker is rated to. So I'm a little confused as to why this is happening and it doesn't want to operate. So the real question becomes, how do you expand the Titan with a battery expansion system and that's going to be with the titan batteries that's going to be the best option this appears to work to a degree but is not working at all right now so that's really really unfortunate i know that well i can, I can just show you i can disconnect these batteries right here and we can turn this load back on with the base batteries that are with the titan and it's going to run it no problem and I've already had this happen once where these batteries were running for nearly an hour without these batteries connected because the breaker popped. So in my opinion, the best thing to do if you have a Titan is to simply get more of the Titan batteries. And I've been very happy with it. It just doesn't do 240 volt power, but for any 120 volt power needs, this is definitely a really good option. I've been running my off-grid cabin for years, literally, uh, with this Titan solar generator. I have two of these. I have one here and one at my off-grid cabin. Overall, I still really, really like the Titan. It's a very good unit. I recommend it. You can find it at poweredportablesolar.com. But because it doesn't do 240 volt power, you may need to get a different unit. And all you got to do to find that out is shoot me an email to info at poweredportablesolar.com. I'm going to find you the best deals and the best kit to fit whatever your needs are. And I would love to do that. The Titan's a great way to be prepared. Uh, I would not use these batteries to expand uh, to this Titan system, but you can definitely get more Titan batteries. If you wanted to get batteries like these, these are gonna be really good for your own DIY setup where you get your own inverter, your own charge controller, your own fuses and your own breakers and everything like that. They're a little bit harder to expand on the fly versus something like this, you just stack the batteries on. But overall, I like both setups, but they don't work very well together, which is unfortunate. Be prepared, see you on the next video.